Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage an amazing champion of national service, the CEO of the Case Foundation, Ms. Jean Case. Thank you and good afternoon. It's my honor and my privilege to be with you today to welcome a great leader from a remarkable global company to this stage. But before I tell you about our next speaker, it might help to provide some context as to why he and other leading CEOs from the private sector are here with us today. Like you, I find this remarkable gathering to be awe-inspiring. But when Alan, John, Michael, and Michelle thought about bringing all of us together, I don't think they were looking at Service Nation as an event. I think they had in mind that this gathering would become a movement, a movement that has the potential to transform communities, put the needs of citizens first, and ring in a new day when, when the American tradition of service to others sweeps across the nation and maybe even the globe. After last night's forum and today's great sessions, I think the real question is, how do we sustain the momentum we're all feeling here in New York? And I think maybe the answer lies in a word that's become popular in this political season, and that word is change. As we look for new solutions that will provide scale and sustainability in our efforts to address the needs of our citizens and communities, we must think about change in our approach to daunting problems that have dogged us for years. It's pretty clear that the same old, same old isn't gonna get us there. We have to be innovative, and we have to be willing to break down the silos that have existed for too long between the public, nonprofit, and private sectors. Simply put, all sectors have to pull together in a whole new way to achieve the kind of hope and opportunity we want. This is the big idea behind an effort launched earlier this year by the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation, which I'm honored to chair. This new initiative emphasizes pro bono service and calls on the corporate sector to deploy its talent in the form of human capital into the nonprofit sector in five key gap areas, technology, finance, business development, human resources, and marketing. These five areas, if you talk to any nonprofit leader, are missing greatly in the nonprofit sector. They want this talent, and they often don't have the ability to recruit it. So the President's Council, together with corporate partners, including Deloitte, Target, and UPS, launched a Billion and Change campaign. This initiative was launched here in New York in February with the goal of getting a billion dollars in corporate commitments for this innovative pro bono effort over the next three years. The good news is this week we announced we've passed the $400 million mark and we're just six months out from its launch. I think we've been successful because companies know that the next generation of talent want more from their careers. And consumers today want to feel that the companies and the services that they invest in are from companies that are giving back. Which brings me to our next speaker. Lloyd Blankfein is chair and CEO of Goldman Sachs. Most know Goldman Sachs as among the most prestigious investment banks in the world. They know Goldman has been responsible for helping to build economic prosperity through the many companies it has helped build and take forward. But those who know Goldman Sachs well also know that's only part of the story. What makes this great company unique is its role in helping, helping to address the needs of communities. Yes, Goldman has been generous. Hundreds of millions of dollars go out to the communities they serve. And they've been a corporate leader in service as well. Last year alone, they've contributed more than 145,000 hours of service. Goldman recognizes that its most important corporate asset is its talent, the talent of its people. 
and they've been quick to take the core competencies of their people across the board and apply them in strategic and smart ways in the nonprofit sector. Through its philanthropy and its service, Goldman models a new way forward. But behind every great company is a great leader. And that's why I'm excited to be here today to welcome Goldman's chair and CEO, Lloyd Blankfein. Lloyd has been in the role since June 2006 and has brought to it a wealth of experience that has helped keep Goldman at the top of their game. Goldman's leadership extends to numerous, I'm sorry, Lloyd's leadership extends to numerous nonprofit organizations where he serves as director, including two here, Partnership for New York City and Catalyst. Perhaps more can be said about Lloyd Blankfein in the priorities he's driven forward in the last year at Goldman Sachs than in any bio or in any resume. It says something when one of the most powerful and prestigious companies in the world dedicates its time and resources to reducing inequality and ensuring that there's more shared economic growth around the world, as Lloyd has done at Goldman. As we gather to make new commitments to service and to be more strategic in deploying all assets of our society toward building brighter hope and opportunity, I want to thank Lloyd Blankfein and Goldman Sachs for modeling what it means to be a great corporate citizen. Please join me in welcoming Lloyd Blankfein to the stage. Well, thank you, Jean. It is an honor to be part of such an important event with so many distinguished Americans. When I first began my career at Goldman Sachs 26 years ago, the idea of service was not commonly expressed across much of the private sector. Corporate responsibility and later corporate citizenship were amorphous concepts which took time to develop. And over the years, the debate about over why and to what extent companies should engage in philanthropic activities has veered from one extreme to the other. At Goldman Sachs, I can't recall a time when we ever had the debate about corporate engagement. It wasn't because there was complete consensus on what policies or activities we should support. Instead, there was more of an expectation that people across the firm should give their time and lend their expertise to the nonprofit organizations that interested them the most. This expectation was rooted in the belief that a broader perspective made our people more effective and well-rounded. And in the process, it added another meaningful dimension to one's life. Because our people were so closely identified with the firm they worked at, the value of service has become a natural part of our culture. The fact is that people already come into Goldman Sachs with a strong inclination for service. And for those who ultimately decide to leave the firm, it is often for the opportunity of public service. So we have to have our own public service program that our people consider meaningful in order to attract and to retain them. We have established an integrated corporate engagement platform that utilizes the best assets of our firm, namely our people and our convening power, and directs them to areas where they can have the most impact. And this is what led us to our most significant corporate engagement program, 10,000 women. We are giving our time, energy, and yes, $100 million to provide a business and management education to 10,000 deserving women across developing countries and targeted areas in the United States. Thank you. By providing this opportunity to women who wouldn't otherwise have one, we focused on a neglected area where we can make a difference and one that is aligned with our fundamental business. We are bringing together educational institutions and nonprofit organizations in developed and developing countries. They are working together jointly to develop curriculum, train professors, and more generally, improve the quality and accessibility of business education for future generations of students in countries like Nigeria, Rwanda, Egypt, India, and Brazil. 
We knew from the outset, however, that a critical part of any initiative would require the direct involvement of all of our people. And so, as women enter the program, they are being matched with mentors from Goldman Sachs. After work on the weekends, our people are helping those aspiring entrepreneurs and managers on general business questions, consulting on assignments and reviewing business plans. In July, we held our first information session on mentoring. It was three times oversubscribed. This is but one example of motivated people who work in competitive and demanding jobs who hunger for the opportunity to serve. People want to be part of an organization that is about bigger things, and they want to be able to personally commit their time to service. One area where we think there is tremendous opportunity to involve our people is capacity building with nonprofits. A lot of nonprofits struggle with operational and management challenges, particularly as they attract new funds. Too many of them lack good opportunities to improve processes, budgeting, and accountability. That's why we are pleased to announce the launch of a new effort called Leadership in Service. This will be a day-long conference for nonprofit executives that will focus on helping nonprofits increase their capacity to manage their growing fiscal, operation, and people responsibilities. Goldman Sachs will co-host the summit with the Case Foundation at our New York offices in the spring of 2009. Building on the success of the Goldman Sachs Capacity Building Conference last year, this summit will give participants the opportunity to choose from a variety of sessions designed to strengthen their organization's effectiveness. They will attend workshops about specific areas of capacity building, including board development, strategic planning, financial management, program evaluation, and staff development. And people from across Goldman Sachs will be active participants throughout the day. Again, I want to thank Jean for her extraordinary work in bringing so many people together around the common value of service. Goldman Sachs is proud to be a part of this extraordinary effort. Thank you very much.